safety under any conditions is largely a matter of knowing about possible hazards, being observant, and applying good judgment about avoiding trouble. Good safety and health practice should be used at home as well as on the job. The home is among the more dangerous places. It can provide the setting for a long list of injuries. Cuts and punctures, burns, including ultraviolet burns from the sun, injuries from falls, electric shock, eye injuries from flying objects or the sun, toxic gas, toxic liquid, explosion, injury from power tools, injury from falling objects, and of course, many more. This list of hazards applies to industrial situations with little change, except that certain of the possible injury causes are watched more closely. Welding is no more hazardous than any other metal working occupation. All of the injuries can be prevented, or at least reduced in number and severity, by alertness and observance of caution. After nearly a century of existence, electric welding has proven to be not injurious to health. A welder, however, can encounter any of the conditions that can cause damage or injury, those that are directly related to the welding process and those that may be totally unrelated to the welding process. There are several important points to consider for promoting safety. Electric shock and damage. All types of electric tools or equipment can be a shock hazard. Saws, drills, extension lights, and so forth all operate on voltages higher than the output of welding machines. Poor quality or poorly maintained equipment is a main cause of shock. Use only high quality equipment, keep it in repair. Use insulated electrode holders. Power source installations must be made in accordance with national electrical and local codes and manufacturer's instructions. Metal frames of welding machines should be grounded either to grounded cold water pipes made of metal or to copper pegs driven into the ground. This ground connection is independent of the welding circuit and source of electricity. Frequently inspect cable connections and insulation. Make repairs immediately. Replace if repairs cannot be made. Broken insulation can permit arcing to grounded metal. This can cause eye damage, start fires, and do other damage. Make splices with secure clamps and cover with insulating tape. No splices should be within 10 feet of a gun or electrode holder. Never touch electrode holders of two machines at the same time. If they are set at opposite polarity, the voltage will be double the usual amount. For the same reason, never connect two power sources to the same work without first checking the relative voltage potential. When paralleling two transformer power sources, make sure that they are in phase. To check this, connect the work leads together and check the voltage between the electrodes. It should be practically zero. If not, call your supervisor. Report faulty equipment for repair by qualified maintenance personnel. Arc radiation. The arc radiates high levels of infrared and ultraviolet light rays. Momentary exposure to unshielded eyes can result in severe damage and pain, which can be compared to hot sand in the eyes. Similar injury will result from longer exposure with inadequate eye protection. Lens shades are identified by numbers and vary in darkness depending on the welding process, the diameter of the electrode, and amperage level. Refer to the American Welding Society specification for safety in welding and cutting to determine the proper shade for your particular application. In general, the lens should be as dark as possible and still permit clear visibility of the welding area. Proper clothing is necessary to prevent burns from ultraviolet and infrared radiation and also to protect from hot metal. Trousers should be without cuffs which might trap hot metal. The leg should be long enough to cover shoe tops. Ankle-high safety shoes should be worn while welding. Leather spats and hand guards may be used if desired. Leather gauntlet gloves must be worn. Legs, body, and arms should be protected with leather apron, coat, or bib as desired. A helmet must be worn to protect head and neck. Wear safety glasses and a cap under the helmet. 
Protect other workers by placing shielding screens around the welding operation. Do not work within 200 feet of degreasing operations. Ultraviolet radiation can change some solvents into dangerous toxic gases. Air contamination. There are two types of air contamination produced by welding, particulate matter and gases. Particulate matter is tiny solids suspended in air. Smoke from a cigarette, for example, is particulate matter suspended in air. Gases are elements or compounds and are not visible. The potential harm from fumes and gases depends upon the chemical composition of the gases and particulate matter, the concentration at the welder's breathing zone, and the length of time of exposure. The source of contamination is from electrode coatings, coatings on the metal, such as paint, oil, grease, solvents, and from some metals, such as zinc, cadmium, lead, and beryllium. These metals, when vaporized, are hazardous and must be kept under control by proper ventilation. The most common gas produced by welding processes is carbon dioxide and not considered harmful with proper ventilation. Brazing and gas welding fluxes containing fluorides can produce potentially harmful gases. When welding in confined areas, any gas that will displace oxygen in the air is dangerous. Engine-driven power sources produce gases. The most hazardous one is carbon monoxide. It must not be allowed to accumulate in the presence of people. Preheating furnaces and flames can produce carbon monoxide. Proper ventilation depends on the size of the room, number of welders in the room, the nature of the fumes that may result from welding, and the amount of welding being done. When welding outside, usually no ventilation is necessary. Large rooms with high ceilings may need only the usual room ventilation if no toxic fumes are generated by the welding process. In production welding situations, booths or specially directed airflow should be provided. The airflow should be adequate to clear the welding area of fumes and be directed so that fumes are not breathed by the welder. Portable ducts may be provided next to the welding operation for more direct removal of fumes. In confined areas, air supply respirators must be used where toxic fumes are present. Never use pure oxygen because of the increased combustibility. Even steel wool will burn in pure oxygen. Never work alone in compartments or confined spaces. Welding supervisors should be aware of the standards established by the Occupational Safety and Health Act and welding textbooks, which provide the knowledge necessary for safe welding conditions. Fire and explosion. It is estimated that 6% of fires in, in industrial plants are caused by cutting and welding in areas not specifically designated or approved for such work. The three elements of the fire triangle heat, fuel, and oxygen are present at all welding operations. Thoroughly search the area for flammable material. Do not weld or cut near flammable material. Arcs or flames will ignite any nearby combustible material. Hot slag and molten metal can fly 25 feet or more. Move combustibles out of range or shield them with a non-combustible material. Do not weld on tanks or containers that have held flammable material without thorough cleaning, purging with inert gas, or filling with water up to the weld area. Provide for venting. If welding on wood or on a wooden floor, brush the area clean and wet the wood. The welder then must be protected from electric shock by wearing rubbers or standing on insulating material. Have a fire extinguisher in a quickly accessible area and when the danger is great, have an extinguisher operator stand ready. Compressed gases. Compressed gases which are used for shielding, gas welding, and other industrial processes present a serious hazard if not properly stored and maintained. Cylinders should be properly marked for content. 
stored separately, stored with protective valve caps, stored in a vertical position, secured in place with a chain or other device, and kept below 130 degrees Fahrenheit. They should not be dropped or struck, used as rollers, moved with magnetic crane lifts, in an electric circuit, damaged with an arc strike, and opened or closed with wrenches when hand wheels are provided. Compressed gases must be used only for the purpose intended. Valves, hoses, pipes, and other distribution equipment must be kept in good repair. Some of the hazards that can be caused by careless handling and use of compressed gases are, if the valve is broken off, a fully charged cylinder. The cylinder will take off like a rocket. Oxygen saturated clothing will burn as if soaked in gasoline. Fusible plugs on overheated or burning acetylene tanks will discharge a high velocity stream of gas or flame. And leaking gas can displace oxygen in the air and cause suffocation or explosion. Well cleaning. When slag is chipped from a weld, it can fly with surprising force. Grinding particles and dust are common in welding areas. Wear safety glasses with side shields. Other hazards. When injury is done to a person, it is usually caused by a person. Sometimes they are one and the same person. By exercising care, accidents can be reduced. By wearing protective clothing, the injury can be minimized. Don't allow articles to fall. Wear a hard hat in case something falls on you. Safety shoes protect toes. Confined areas may be contaminated with toxic gas or may become contaminated by welding gas. Check before entering. Assure proper ventilation and have someone be a lookout for quick rescue if necessary. Dangerous radiation may be encountered in some conditions. Get the advice of an expert. Loud noise can cause hearing loss. Weld peening, chipping, and other loud industrial processes should be screened out with ear protectors. Good housekeeping can prevent injury. Keep the work area neat. Place electrode stubs in a container. They can cause falls. Remove electrodes from holders when not welding. The full list of possible hazards in day-to-day -day living and industrial conditions is endless. However, personal injury can be practically eliminated or reduced to a minimum by being informed, being aware, consulting safety specialists, becoming an expert in your personal safety, and extending courtesy to others.